All right, this is what's going on. If you wanna be into intellectual property school, what you need to do is go below and get into the app. The app will be in the first comment or the app will be in the description. Now, I got the question for you. Let's say I was charging you $10,000 for this training. At the moment, I'm not, but let's say I was charging you $10,000 and I taught you how to make six figures for the rest of your life. Would you say that price is too much or would you think that price is a serious deal? Because this is what we're gonna teach you, the transformational process of going from a regular person to someone who can create that mental money. Since 2009, I have been making a lot of money from my mind. And these are the things I'm gonna teach you step by step how to make money with your mind. So if you wanna be part of that experience, go below, get into the application, and also, please stop sending me emails asking me how much it is. Because unless you go through the application process, you will not get into the intellectual property school. So with that, let's get into today's video. One of the things that I find to be really interesting is the absolute fear of spending money. And let me go ahead and just kind of take you through a few processes of how I got to where I'm at. My first foray into getting the education to the setup, I had to spend money. I had to spend money for Earl Nightingale's Lead the Field course. At the time, it was like $114 and I was making like $250 a week. 25, maybe 20% of my monthly income, 250, about 10% of my monthly income, which was quite significant. And then we got on into, I got into uh, Renecrate, then I got into business environments, and then I got into panel, panel systems. And I was in a point where I was making money because I had a job and I didn't have to spend any money to get my first business up and running. It cost me absolutely, I had to create another LLC. It was really cheap. And then we got into the storage auction world where I spent, I believe, twenty to $30,000 to learn how to buy storage auction units. The first few months were rough. The first few months were expensive because I was out buying stuff and I was out buying trash and garbage because I really didn't know. So I got on that pathway and I spent that money and then I learned how to buy storage auction units. So let's go ahead and put a price tag on that. The price tag for me to learn how to buy storage auction units, I would say was between 25 and $30,000. That was money that I spent to later on begin to make six figures with the storage auction business. Let me go ahead and put something in here. And I want you guys to really, really pay attention to me. I get a lot of emails, I get a lot of questions of people who are asking, I would consider nonsense questions, like who won the car? Uh, who won the money? Uh, how did you figure out how to go ahead and create resumes that were tailor-made for the jobs you were applying? And one of the things is, and I'm gonna need to say this, if you email me and ask me these type of questions, I'm gonna start sending you a consulting form where you can go ahead and get on a consulting list because that's what that is. Uh, typically after a few rounds, I will start to ignore you because you just want to avoid spending money. And let me go ahead and say this, there is no way that you can avoid spending money and to become extremely financially successful. There are many things that you can go out and get what I call scrub money. This is, you can do this thing for free, you can do that thing for free, you get 100 bucks over here, maybe get 300 bucks over here. There's a lot of low budget hustling online. Things that you can do for free that do not require a lot of money, but in the end, you will not make money. Everything that I have done, I have had to spend money to learn how to do it. And with the storage auction business, like I said, I spent $30,000. And let's go ahead and talk about this because I started off in a boarding house. I was working a bunch of low wage garbage jobs. I did not start off in a house. I did not start off with my parents. I started off there. 
And what I did is I continued to work on myself, continued to work on my business. And I got to a point where my year, I was at Business Environments, my first business, which didn't cost me a lot of money. I think the LLC was 120 bucks to set up. And I made $250,000 from that business. But I went through an 18 month training process of learning how to get leads, learning how to make phone calls, learning how to set appointments, learning how to go on appointments, learning how to close appointments, learning how to get the commission check, learning how to manage the installation of the furniture. You see this? There's seven things I had to learn how to do. Not one, but seven. And many of you are looking for really simple, easy solutions to a lot of money. I'm going to say something. My name is Glendon Cameron, and I have none of that here. I have nothing that you can do really simply, really easily, and make a lot of money without working hard or putting up some cash. So my, uh, I was in the storage auction business, and like I said, I spent twenty-five to 30000 to learn how to buy storage units, and then I bought storage units for multiple years. In many, many years, I was working 12 to 16 hours a day. And during this process of learning how to buy storage auctions and this process of learning how to effectively, and I will share with you what I've learned. I learned how to buy storage auctions. I learned how to package storage auctions. I learned how to load storage auctions. I learned how to advertise storage auctions on eBay, Amazon, Craigslist. And I also learned how to sell new office furniture. See that? That's, that's nine things I learned. Once again, there's not this one thing you can learn and then you're gonna become instantly rich. I was on that process of being in the storage auction business, learning how to run the upscale garage sale, which was my on the spot storage auction retail in my warehouse and putting the signs up on Mountain Industrial. And I learned that process. So after spending almost 10 years in the storage auction business, then I come to YouTube in 2009 and I write my first full book, Making Money A to Z with self storage and Auction. Now, for me to get to this point where I'm making mental money, it took me almost 10 years and $30,000 spent to learn how to make mental money online. I'm going somewhere with this. There are many of you out there who feel that with technology and the advent of technology that you can go ahead and shake a little hustle dust or something without working hard or without spending money and you're going to get a lot of money. I'm here to tell you from personal experience, that's just not going to work. How do I know? Let's rewind this way back before I got into homelessness and when I was in the military. And I used to read these magazines, entrepreneur magazine, uh, these small business magazines. And what I used to do was order these courses that were uh, represented in the back of the magazine. I would order these courses and I would do these things and I would start all of these half-baked hustles. Because here's the thing, I was in the military, didn't have a lot of money, didn't spend a lot of money. Once again, I was in the military, didn't have a lot of money, didn't spend a lot of money. And one of the things that I have learned over years and years of personal experience that as long as you're in that bucket of not trying to spend any money, not trying to um, learn, not trying to educate yourself, you're gonna remain poor. And that's what happened to me when I was in the military trying to start all these businesses and the business that I spent the most money and this was really funny. I was like, take a picture with your pooch. And I spent like almost $2,000 getting a camera. I spent like 200 bucks getting a phone in my room. I spent like 300 bucks, close to $3,000 for a business that didn't work, made no money. And it was extremely, you know, it was just way, way, way before its time. And what I have learned is if you want to become someone who can make money online, and it's very much like dating. I have found out that when you date really well in real life, when you have the ability to go up to women and talk to women and ask them out, that translates very well online because you already know how to date. You already know how to approach. Well, the same thing with business. If you can go ahead and set up a business in the real world, learn sales, marketing, lead generation, all those things, and then you bring that stuff online, you can 
online will 10x everything that you've learned in the real world. And, you know, I'm having a heart to heart talk with you guys because a lot of you are just scared to part with money. And I'm going to share something with you. Once I learned that I had to spend money, and I'm not talking like millions of dollars or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like I said, uh, the most that I spent starting on storage auction business was about 30,000, 25, 30,000. And then my next business, when I came to YouTube, I spent, and I'll include lifestyle maintenance expenses because I put myself on the budget. 1500 bucks a month let me tell you why once you start spending money that you have saved it goes quick so you got to be really careful you got to be really judicious so i put myself on a 1500 dollars per month budget and this was let's say let's go all the way back to january so january to august august is the eighth month so we're talking about twelve thousand dollars and then we're going to go to september and october and that's going to be fifteen thousand dollars and then we're going to put um the five thousand dollars that i spent getting this business up and running between 2009 and 2011 so Right there, my expenditures were about $20,000 to maintain myself, to live, to buy food, to put gas in my car. And I spent $5,000 getting the business started in 2009. 2009 to 2010, I made $62,000. So as we got closer to Christmas, I was able to stop pulling money out of my savings account because October, I didn't really make that much. October was the first month that I was starting to sell. I think I made like 2000 ish in November. I made, I think close to four in December. I made like six. So as we went along and we got to a point where money was starting to come in. And the, the main point that I want to make to you guys is if you want to get to the point where you can make this mental money, organic money, you must do something in life. You cannot sit and keep consuming information and consuming information and then wah, pop out online and like make that money. You gotta go out and build something. You gotta go out and do something. You gotta go out and create something. So I had created my own storage auction recipe. When I was in the storage auction business back in the day, in the early days, these guys did not sell on Craigslist. They didn't sell on eBay. They didn't sell on Amazon. So that gave me a competitive advantage because I was very much in tune to the internet and I started pushing as much as I could. At one point, the eBay sales got a little scary because the eBay sales represented 75% of our profit. And I was like, that's, and then it happened eBay suspended our account and eBay held on to our money. And because I have that hustler DNA, I went ahead and figured out a way to get another eBay account and then figure out a way to get another PayPal account. And I just kept selling on eBay and literally eBay held that money for almost two well, PayPal because at the time eBay owned PayPal. And at the time they held on to that money for almost two years before they released it. And but during that time, I couldn't just sit and wait. I had to be active. I had to activate. I had to go out and make that money. So one of the things is it, it got really, really scary having so much of your revenue coming from one source. And that's one of the things that, that you know, this is one of the reasons that I have gotten into the holding company game. And this is why at the moment I have one, two, three sources of revenue. Because once again, having that one source or that one main driver of revenue can be very, very scary. But in the essence, for you to become this corporate citizen that makes this mental money, you gotta do something. Maybe you're a cook. Maybe you are an exercise person. Maybe you gotta actually go out in the real world and actually achieve something. My name is Glennon Cameron, and you can go to the Google machine and you can go to Glennon Cameron on Amazon and see results. I'm not talking about writing books. I have several written books on Amazon at the moment. And see, this is the thing. Like, I know a lot of you guys did not have the vantage point of maybe having someone successful in your family or someone that you can be around, but I understand there's a lot of fear 
of taking action. And one of the things that you've got to do is to take action. And I will say this, you're better taking action and failing than not doing anything and not failing. And this is why, when you fail, you learn so many things. And this is something that I've talked about in many older videos. I've had so many failures. Uh, I've had so many things that did not work out. And this year, I have spent $15,000 testing out stuff that just didn't work. And right now I have another test that's going on and I have spent, I believe $7,000 and this test is going really well. And I can go ahead and tell you, um, once again, I will tell you what, I will tell my students what the test is. And there's, uh, since the first month is going well, I have plans to spend 10,000 this month, 10,000 next month, and 10,000 in September because once again you need to actually have data to make your decisions so you can formulate a business hypothesis that's based on real data versus oh I feel it in my gut all right I don't feel stuff in my gut I have analysis I have data points I do certain things a different way so I have learned that what you need to do is have your stuff established to the point where you can be operating on real data that's come from real results and I'll say something like business plans are really really a fascinating thing you can write the best business plan you can do all of this research but until you actually put your business out there and start getting real world results you don't know if your idea i mean you, you can win the best business plan and it can look good but until this business becomes activated and goes out into the real world and starts doing things you're not going to know and this is one of the things and this this is the overall overwhelming theme of this process once again you got to do something and i get this question like what kind of youtube channel should i start i have no clue i don't know you i have no idea and this is one of the things there are 51 million YouTube channels out there, but there's only 362. I would go ahead and broaden that number because it's not about your channel size, it's not about your subscribers, it's about how many views you can get. So I would say out of that 51 million YouTube channels, I would estimate there's 700,000 that are actually making money. And that 700,000 actually makes 90% of the YouTube revenue. So I get these questions all the time. What kind of YouTube? I don't know. I have no, I don't know you. I don't know you, man. I have no clue to who you are, your work ethic. I have no clue to what kind of ch YouTube channel that you should start. But I do have a methodology. I have a pathway, I have a sequence. We have training on the things that you can do to start your YouTube channel for you to go ahead and become financially independent in the future. Because once again, for you to make that mental money, you've got to actually do something. And you know, was in a storage auction business, went well. Um, first business I started, which actually cost me no money. And I'll go ahead and tell you the secret. If you want to get into a business with a very low startup cost, get in the business doing something that you know how to do. That's what I did. I was selling new office furniture. They wanted me to sell used office furniture. I already had clients, I already had lists. I was, already, I was already selling furniture. So it was a real easy, easy win for me to do that because I already knew what to do because I was already doing it. So if you want to start a business, and this, this is the thing, I get this all of the time. I get this all the time. Well, I'm sick of what I'm doing. You're sick of what you're doing, which is your strongest, personal pursuit you have the most skills but you're sick of it you're just tired of it on youtube there's literally so many I, the reason i quit big law the reason i quit this because people are sick and tired of doing what they know how to do which is the greatest resource of money that they have humans are i, I used to work with this guy and this term just popped in my head stupid human tricks and this is one of the biggest stupid human tricks that you can put out there. You have a great resource, you have skill set, you know how to do this business, but because you're just sick and tired of it, you just want to be free, 
Did you stop doing this and then you go off and try to do something you don't know how to do and then you fail and you just be like, bam. And it's like, well, God doesn't like me. No, God, God has nothing to do with this. You just stupid. I'm just saying, you just stupid. To go ahead and run from something that you have skill sets in, you know how to do, and to run from it because you're just sick and tired of it. You're just stupid. Because one, this is one of the reasons that so many businesses fail. So my first business was a success. The storage auction business, which I had to learn how to do, was a success. My third business, which was a publishing company, was a success. My fourth business, online courses, was a success. The car rental business, complete disaster. Now, let's talk about why the car rental business was a complete disaster. I was trying to do something, I didn't know how to do it. That's the recipe for disaster. That's the recipe for bad outcomes but once again if you want to get to this middle money and i'm going to tell you the middle money is nice uh that first year in 2011 going into 2012 when i made 1.6 million dollars i was living in an apartment my budget was about 2500 bucks per month i didn't have any debt my car was paid off and honestly i got a little scared because because i have been in business long enough I knew that next year, that it was a great chance that I wasn't gonna make 1.6 million. So that I held on to that money. And what happened? It just started to drop off because my uh, AdSense checks got smaller and smaller. And But you know what? Because I was not stupid. I didn't go out and buy a Lambo. I didn't go out and do any of this crazy stuff. And when the income level dropped, I was perfectly fine. I was perfectly fine. And this is one of the reasons that I keep saying you should take the money management course. Because a lot of you, your money ain't fine. You're not fine. And this is coming from someone who did not make any money in January, February, March, and April of this year. And I was, I'm was i driving a brand new Porsche, living in a high rise. The results speak for themselves. So once again, if you want to go ahead and become a member of the Intellectual Property School, you need to go below and get in the application. And, and based upon what has happened so far, this is the first week and a half of the phone calls. I am not going back to the old way that I used to do things. This is much better. I get better clients. I have a conversation. I feel that I get to know my people and we're going to do it. So if you want to be part of the Intellectual Property School, go below the link will be below it'll be in the description box or be in the comments and let me just go ahead and say this as respectfully as i can do not email me asking me a bunch of questions if you don't want to pay that's fine just continue to watch the free videos i appreciate you for doing that but if you email me a bunch of questions and you notice that you don't get any responses Lyndon has spoken so if you want to be part of the intellectual property school where you can learn how to make six figures for the rest of your life, go below, fill out the application, and you want to get in this application, you want to actually reserve your schedule in the month of July because the price of the intellectual property school is going to go up dramatically for the month of August. So my name is Glendon Cameron. Hopefully you heard me. I will talk to you guys in the next one.